so far, Nvidia's RTX 2070 has been received a lot better than the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, but that's mostly due to reviewers being sampled with the actual reference priced models like the EVGA Black, Asus Turbo, and MSI's Armor. Those cards are currently available for $499 US dollars at the time of filming, which prices it typically $30 to $50 more than the cheapest GTX 1080s. The RTX 2070 that we're going to be looking at today though uses a binned TU-106 GPU, a boost clock of 210 MHz above the reference model out of the box, and runs pretty damn cool as well. This is MSI's new Gaming Z. It might look familiar because it uses the same shroud design and dimensions as their popular Gaming X models, but thankfully they've done away with the red trim that I'm very thankful for. Finally, those who want to build a neutral themed gaming system can consider these cards as an option, and that's very good news seeing as the Gaming X and Gaming Z have a very good reputation when it comes to thermals and acoustics. Is it worth it though? I mean, that really is the ultimate question. The RTX 2070 Gaming Z that we're looking at today is $600, which prices it right between the roughly $500 GTX 1080 and the roughly $700 GTX 1080 Ti. Now in Australia, this model here will cost you just under $1,100, roughly $100 less than the Gaming X 1080 Ti and $200 more than the Gaming X 1080. I'm only using the Gaming X as a reference as it's more of an apples to apples comparison, of course. So in terms of specs, we're getting the same memory configuration as the RTX 2080, so eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory clock to 14 gigabits per second with a 256 bit bus width. CUDA cores are significantly cut down though, 2,304 compared to the 2080 is 2,944, and tensor cores and RT cores are cut down as well, seeing as we're using less SMs. TDP is quoted 50 watts above the reference version, but I don't believe that to be entirely accurate since we are using the same GPU, although power overhead on this model seemed to be pretty decent, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. The NVLink connector is dropped here if you were planning on running multiple of these RTX 2070s in SLI, which I doubt would be many of you. The smartest consensus is, of course, to purchase the single faster GPU that you can afford at any time, as SLI scaling in games continues to dwindle. Now, we will be looking at the Gaming Z 2070 in depth in terms of cooling performance and PCB layout in a separate video. Today, we're mostly going to focus on the performance aspect to see if this card really is worth it in that regard. I'm most interested to see how close we can get to a 1080 Ti like EVGA's SC2 that I have here, seeing as this is a cherry pick GPU in the Gaming Z. And as I said earlier, the reference priced RTX 2070s that most reviewers were sampled with at launch were not binned or pre overclocked. I'm expecting the gaming Z to perform at least 5 to 10 percent better out of the box and hopefully a few percent more when overclocked. Now, speaking of overclocking, I really was interested to see how much uh, additional frequency we could squeeze out of this uh, binned GPU because, as I said, it already has an additional 210 megahertz out of the box, and I really wasn't expecting a whole lot here. First, let's see how the card behaves at stock, and then we'll get into overclocking. So without much surprise, out of the box, we are hitting a power limit, even without any core or memory offset. We were still getting respectable boost clocks though of around 1930 megahertz, with the core voltage set to around 1.03 to 1.05 volts. Fan speeds are also very conservative for this card out of the box, given how quiet it is. We'll talk more about this in depth in a full review of the card later. So for the overclock, I was able to push the power limit to 111%, which thankfully freed us from any power limit throttling. I added an additional 130 megahertz to the GPU and an additional 1050 megahertz to the memory. This saw the GPU clock settling in at a coincidentally and suspicious 2070 megahertz for our RTX 2070. Illuminati confirmed? I think so. The core voltage wasn't able to be touched though, which is a bit disappointing because this card has a serious amount of headroom in terms of cooling. And again, we'll take a closer look at the Gaming Z soon, but I decided to push the fan speed for my overclock profile up to 75% for each fan. This was still not that loud compared to other cards at this RPM, and our GPU temps were now a whole lot lower, allowing GPU Boost 4.0 to bump that clock speed a few megahertz higher. 
All right, so now to find out how this card actually performs in respect to cards like the GTX 1080 Ti and the 1080 with and without those overclocks in place. Let's start with Battlefield 1 as usual. We're looking at 1440p here and the results sure are impressive for that RTX 2070. Keep in mind, and this is very important for these future graphs, that you would not likely see the same performance here when using a slower clocked reference version. Remember, our Gaming Z has a factory overclock of over 200 megahertz out of the box. Rise of the Tomb Raider showed us again that an overclocked RTX 2070 can fill that gap between a GTX 1080 and 1080 Ti, and it'll be very interesting to see how this affects our price to performance numbers later on. The overclock seems to be putting in some decent work too for the 2070, and that's if that factory OC wasn't already enough. Games like Overwatch have the RTX 2070 eerily close to that 1080 Ti, although 1% and 0.1% frame rate does seem to be a decent bit behind, which gives us a better idea on frame rate stability between the two. Overall, the RTX 2070 does seem to be holding its own here against the GTX 10 series so far. The results in Project Cars 2 have the overclock 2070 neck and neck with the stock GTX 1080 Ti. And of course, you could apply an overclock to the 1080 Ti also and stretch that gap a little bit further, but our primary focus here is on the 2070. In general, 4K seems to be where the 1080 Ti does stretch against the RTX 2070, and this is likely due to having a larger memory capacity of 11 gigabytes versus eight on the 2070. Warhammer Vermintide 2 shows very close results again with the 2070 Gaming Z well beyond our GTX 1080 streaks in terms of performance and hot on the heels of the 1080 Ti in this title. Again though, if you are playing at 4K, that gap does widen for whatever reason, so if you're playing at higher resolutions than 1440p, it's definitely something to consider. For Honor shows a more reasonable and honestly expected cap between the two here, so the margins really do vary between game to game due to different game engines. The 2070 does prove itself to be a competitive option though when it comes to 4K gaming if you don't mind dropping things to around high settings. And lastly, before we look at the averages and value metrics, we have Witcher 3 with a larger gap than we've seen previously, both at 1440p and 4K between the 1080 Ti and the 2070. Here I saw the 2070 performing closer to the GTX 1080 in performance, especially when it came to the slowest 1% and 0.1% of frames. Okay, so if you could only look at one chart for the entire video, it should definitely be this one, as it really is the bottom line for most people. Here, we're looking at how the RTX 2070 stacks up, literally, against the other options. We're seeing which cards are slower or faster than the RTX 2070, and then by how much. So we can see that applying our overclock to the 2070 gives us a 6.6% bump in performance at 1440p, and also that the 1080 Ti is 13.8% faster on average at 1440p against the stock RTX 2070. When it's overclocked though, the gap does close, and as we saw in our separate game benches previously, it really does depend on the game. Some games show only a few FPS difference, some show 10 FPS or more. At 4K though, I would recommend a 1080 Ti or greater though if you are planning on playing at high settings or above and with demanding titles. Here the 1080 Ti is 15.7% faster than the RTX 2070 at stock, and again, I say stock, but do remember this is a factory overclocked model, and that margin would be more like 18 or 20% faster if this were a true reference model. Overall, we're getting faster performance than I was expecting here, and by looking at some of the RTX 2070 reference scores online, a factory overclocked model like the Gaming Z might actually be worth that extra cash. And so I'd really have to test a reference model in addition to the Gaming Z to rightfully make that claim. But against the other options here, the RTX 2070 Gaming Z at a cost of $599 on Newegg.com is actually not a bad offer in terms of price to performance. Whereas the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti were appalling when it came to price to performance, the RTX 2070 is slightly better than a 1080 Ti in this regard, and is slightly behind a GTX 1070. The chart toppers, the 1070 Ti and 1080, which you can get for $420 and $489 respectively at the time of filming, are really great value for what you're getting. The 1070 Ti would be my personal pick right now if I was on a strict budget but still wanted a great performing card. So the RTX 2070 overall seems like a pretty decent option, a lot better than the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, and usually I would highly recommend avoiding uh, aftermarket cards and highly premium models like the Gaming Z, which cost about $100 more than the reference model, uh, which you should be able to get for about $4.99 at the moment. However, the numbers do speak for themselves here, and you are getting roughly equivalent value to a GTX 1080 Ti. 
Now, something that we didn't even talk much about is that if you are going with something like the Gaming Z, you are getting a much more effective cooler also, which is honestly pretty quiet even until 60% fan speed, which has the card running quite cool. Again, we'll talk about this more in depth in a separate video specifically for the Gaming Z. You'll probably also have noticed that I haven't talked about RTX at all, and that's because I don't really think it's even worth mentioning at this point. All right, so most of you guys know how I feel about RTX. Uh, if you don't, you can watch this video in the top right hand corner. But basically, it's been a month since the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti have launched, and we still have not a single game that we can test with these RTX features. My thoughts are that even when RTX does make its way into a few games, it's likely going to be DLSS over there, and then this game has maybe some ray trace shadows, and then this one has reflections enabled. It's not going to be the fully fleshed out RTX experience that we were sold about two months ago. The bottom line here is that you shouldn't be buying the RTX 2070 or the 2080 or 2080 Ti for that matter for uh, RTX. Uh, consider it a bonus in my opinion, that one or two of your games in your Steam library might have DLSS or maybe some ray trace shadows or something like that. I really do think it's gonna take quite some time for this platform to mature. Regardless, the 2070 Gaming Z and the 2070 from what I've seen online does seem to be a pretty compelling option and I can definitely recommend it. So guys, let me know your thoughts on the 2070 down below. If you'd like to check pricing, the RTX 2070 will be down below along with all of the other cards that we've tested today. A huge thanks for watching guys. And as always, I'll see you all in the next one.